So I wanted to start off by sharing who we are, which you've heard our names and roles, but talk a, just very briefly about what our roles and what we do here in the fellowship. So I'm your minister here, and my portfolio includes, by and large, managing the day-to-day -day operations of the congregation. Uh, during this congregation's most recent interim ministry, you all made a shift to policy governance, which means that your board of trustees really holds the broader vision and the mission work of the congregation and delegates to staff sort of the, the ongoing runnings and operations of the congregation. So in a smaller congregation, the board might be making more um, minute decisions. That doesn't happen here. So as chief of staff, I help oversee all of the day-to-day -day operations, and I'm also chief of staff. So I um, have meetings and manage staff and coordinate our regular staff team meetings. Um, I also, my particular areas of governance include worship, and I spend a fair amount of time on worship. I would say probably a day and a half on worship and a day and a half in management um, every day. And then I also am the staff support person for our care teams, so our care and lay ministry and memorial teams. Um, by and large, I support our folks who are providing direct care, and I provide direct care in sort of like more urgent crises situations, as well as to some of our leaders and the folks on the care team themselves. And then the last area of ministry that I have is um, covenantal relations. So this can include conflict resolution, and there are going to be some new and exciting developments in that area too. So stay tuned, but I won't spoil it for you. Um, Karen, could you tell folks a little more about your role here? Um, and I think because you've been here for a while and your role has shifted, I think if you want to talk about like where you started and where you are now. Sure. Thank you. That works. <laughs> um, my title currently is the Director of Congregational Life. And I've been here 15 years. And I started out 10 hours a week. I'm full-time staff now. But I started out 10 hours a week with a Chalice Slider grant. I was hired with a grant, which is beautiful. And also was like, hey, is this, is this role going to stick? And I'm really glad I did. <laughs> and I started mostly with um, kind of more administrative tax, tasks and some, um, some relational type um, uh, roles. Um, and it has uh, grown into a much more relational role. So my areas of governance are membership. Shout out to membership. <laughs> uh, <laughs> membership team, which I have been associated with for, since the beginning. And uh, that includes newcomer ministry, which is one of my greatest joys. Um, and then congregational life. So that fits, right? Director of congregational life. And that's just all the things we do that are relational and community building and also for individual growth. So small group ministry, which is a more kind of intimate getting to know you, bringing your full self and your gifts. And then coffee house and uh, bingo and all the other things we do to, to build relationships with each other and get to know each other's gifts. So, yeah. Pivot slightly because our, the reading that you heard this morning was actually one that Karen shared with me, I think early on in working together, because in getting to know each other, Karen was like, hey, this reading is really foundational to how I ground my work and my job, which probably does not surprise those of you who have worked with Karen. But yeah, tell us a little more about what this reading means to you and how it's informed how you do your role and how you think about shared ministry. Okay, thank you. Um, well, I have to start back just a teeny bit. Um, I was on the board of the UU Association of Membership Professionals, which is my professional organization. And that definitely contributed to my growth and my role and the things I could bring to this fellowship. And, and I, I got um, to be on that board because of the investment of this congregation in the role that I serve. So professional development funds came my way and I started attending GA and connecting with the Greater uh, Unitarian Universal Association. And that's where I got the reading uh, from one of my colleagues in another congregation uh, and we were working on a workshop. So um, we were in it with Erica Barron and uh, that's where that came up. So. Uh, it's, it's almost always true, if not always true, that all of the good things I've come up with here have been collaborative with my colleagues and then collaboratively supported with you all, um, which is just a delight. <laughs> it's a joy. 
Agreed. Um, Karen was also being a little bit modest because she was like the president of the UU Membership Association for I think eight years no. as they were forming. <laughs> it felt like eight years. Um, you, but you were in leadership for a really long time. I was on the board for a long time and okay. eventually they were like, you, you've got to move into the president's role. And it was during COVID, so I blank out a little bit now and then on that, um, the president part. But yeah, that has fed me and continues to feed me as a membership professional connected with that association. It's, it's pretty terrific. Yeah. So, inquiring minds might want to know, what is ministry and what is shared ministry? Um, do you want to do you want to start with the first question of what is ministry? How about I take the shared ministry and you take the ministry? Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is ministry? And especially as it's informed, as this is informed by our reading today, is that. I believe, lots of people believe, that we all have a gift to share. And it might not necessarily be like a physical gift, but the way we are in the world, we've talked about this with vocation, I quote um, Parker Palmer all the time, um, but the, the way that we are in the world, our very being, is in fact our gift and our ministry. Just like the how we are, how you greet folks, how you interact with your neighbors, or your friends, or folks here in the fellowship, your family, um, is in fact your ministry, the gift that you bring to us that will shift and change our world. Uh, and the shared part of it, I think it speaks to kind of what I think is the building block here, which is relationship building. It's hard to know what your gifts are, people bring that out in us, um, or to identify gifts in others if you don't get to spend time in relationship, real meaningful relationship with people. So uh, to be to share uh, what you have and then to share it and work together in a community to build something uh, requires that relationship building, that time together. Um, and it's not always easy. It's, it's, real, it's not hard when you're playing bingo. That's pretty great. You have these conversations and you know, you've just had a great potluck that was very abundant and it's a Friday night and yeah, that, that's when you start to get to know people. That's very valuable. And to go a little deeper and to really show, bring what your gifts are. Gifts, the things that you can't not do. That's the way I look at gifts, the things that make you shine, that shine no matter what. Sometimes we hold them back, but the things that get, make you who you are, that you want to share with people and be in relationship, um, then if we can gather those in community and uh, you know, connect with what we're doing here, which is really not just playing bingo, it is so much more. It is serving the mission and we can see, oh, you know, I am pretty good at this, but this person is really good at this. And then when you see that in each other, when we're able to recognize that, and it doesn't come out right away, it's, it's relationship building, then we can kind of hit that sweet spot of doing what we do here that's um, valuable work as you use. Gifts in service of mission. I could have said it that way. <laughs> I usually use more words than I need. <laughs> yeah, me too, me too. But actually, I would say one of the beautiful, the beautiful things of like, professional shared ministry is that actually like we can all be saying similar things in different ways and like working towards the same goal but actualizing it in different ways because mm -hmm. we're all different people um, and I think in my first year of ministry at least a lot of my energy and time and prioritization was to like build a staff team because because there was just so much going on with COVID and like ministry changes that they're like there wasn't a staff team, so we've spent time, like we're developing a covenant, right? And getting to know each other and what our gifts are. And then we're gonna, you know, be like moving that out to the whole congregation, but we have to um, start with us. And I, I think maybe is, is now a good time to talk about like some of the messy and the good and sure. maybe that like we've experienced. Yes. So I think I can start and say that I, um, I've never been at a congregation that like had a membership professional or a director of congregational life. So there are a whole lot of things that I was just used to doing. Like I, other congregations, I used to be at every new member group. I ran the whole session, you know, like I, there was a lot of stuff. And so when I started, I was like, oh, well, when, in, when is this? And Karen was like, well, I do that. <laughs> and you're welcome to come if you want, but like, I've really got it. 
Like, you know, like I can tell you what to do. And I, I had to like adjust a little bit, you know, of like, oh, like that's not my lane anymore, you know? And we've like, we've had some check-ins of like, okay, whose lane is this? And also times when I think we've been able to recognize like, there are, Karen is, is so gifted in interpersonal relationships and one-on-one -on -one conversations. And there are times when it's been like, yeah, it probably makes sense for you to have this conversation because you have longer term relationships than I do and you're also like particularly gifted. So I think for me, there's been like, um, there's definitely like some, some sublimation of ego, right? And being like, oh yeah, if our shared ministry is our gifts in service of our mission, like, What's, what's the best thing to be done in this moment to get us to where we want to be going, right? Yes. And sometimes that's me doing a thing, and sometimes that's you doing a thing, and sometimes it's us being like, oop, we're stepping on each other's toes. What do we, what do we need to do? Yeah. And I'm an equal opportunity stepper. I have stepped on a lot of people's toes. Um, true, true. Um, and, and another good example for me is that I did communications just because it kind of came in my direction at a point there was a need, and I was... I guess willing to learn it. Um, and now we have a communications person. And I, I remember a time when Libby was new, she's terrific. And um, I said, okay, so this thing is coming up and I'll do this and then I will connect with, with uh, Reverend Kayla and then you two should get together on this. And she said, Reverend Kayla and I have already connected. And I went, oh, <laughs> okay, stepping back. And so there's some beauty in that and being able to know that somebody's holding something and then no, it's not mine, and that someone else is holding it more capably, which is a beautiful thing. And being able to have those conversations, um, I have uh, my whole life been a, a Libra, so conflict and balance, com balance is what I saw and at any cost, and conflict was something I would just, you know, gently step away from, nothing to see here. And um, I, have, uh, I have learned, um, maybe because of my, my age and stage in life, but also I think COVID, there are a lot of lessons I've brought forward, and um, that discomfort um, can be constructive conflict. I think that if we don't do it, we're missing opportunities for growth on staff and with each other. That, that leaning into the discomfort and staying at the table has real value. Um, and I personally think, this is what I like to tell myself, is that we get to practice that here in ways that we don't get to practice it in other areas of our life. I mean, Thanksgiving mm -hmm. table, I'm not going to say anything else about that, right? Like, <laughs> that can be hard, families and um, just the world. But here we get to practice it, and we get to mess up, and then we get to come back together in covenant, and then we get to mess up again. And that's how we end up being able to really um, relate to each other and find our own gifts that, um, you know, sometimes are hard to tap into. And sometimes need refining from each other, mm -hmm. you know, of like how it's showing up and how it's affecting and impacting people in this community. Um, yeah. And I've, I've just seen such great ways where people have like answered invitations and leaned in and, and grown their gifts really um, in service to something greater. And like that's, that's what it's about, right? The relationship building that changes us for goodness. Y'all have People who were here last year have been like, you preached the heck out of that phrase, stop saying it. But like ch changing us for goodness um, and for the fulfillment of our mission. So I feel like, I mean, Karen was just talking about how like there can be discomfort and like messiness. And I feel like most of you have probably experienced that here, right? Like, yeah, there can sometimes be discomfort in relationships and messiness in shared ministry. And, uh, and part of it is that like role, like figuring out what's who's to do. And part of it is just that like, yeah, relationships can be hard and messy when we're like in them fully and when we're willing to learn from each other. Um, and I feel like the, like the other thing that goes with that is the, is the trust aspect, right? Of like trusting that I'm gonna do my thing and you're going to be doing your thing, and you're going to be doing your thing, and you're going to be doing your thing, you know, and we'll like check in and pull, our, pull each other back into the circle as needed, but, um, but that trust part can be hard, and I like heard it when and Karen was like wanting to make sure that, you know, like Libby knew what she was doing, and that like, you know, was like, okay, I'll connect you with Reverend Kayla, and Libby's like, Libby would never actually say this, but, you know, Libby was like, uh, actually, I'm trained in this, and I know a lot about what I'm doing, <laughs> 
and like I got this, like it's cool, you know. I didn't used to say that, but she says it now. Oh, that's Very great. Clearly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, so part of it is like trusting each other to all have gifts, and like as far as for prof professional staff, like trusting each other, and you all trusting us that like. Yeah, like we've been trained. We continue to get training to like stay on top of our game and be bringing good and new ideas uh, back to you all. And um, and that like this this fellowship invests so well in your professional religious professionals, right? To like ensure that we're so. Thank you for that. Uh, to ensure that we're like staying at at the top of our game, um, which doesn't mean that we're not doing this work collaboratively right but it means that there is like some kind of value of like hey you go to this conference and we want to we want to like hear what you learn so that we can uh, incorporate it here right I'm saying a lot yeah and I think <laughs> if we take it um, to the collaborative piece with um, our leaders and our members and our friends um, that trust is there too um, yeah. especially you know in the DNA of this congregation which is fellowship born. So there was a whole lot of kind of get it done stuff early on and everybody did all the things and owned all the things. And sometimes that's easier. That sometimes feels easier. Like, I got this, just, just let me do it. Um, and it's that's, so much more efficient. It, it is efficient, it except for the long-term uh, lack of benefits. Right. Um, it feels good in the moment because you, you, you can just kind of snap it and get it done and move on to the next thing. But the slowed down relationship building, stepping back, even if, um, you know, even if I've handled something like communications for a long time, for me to step back and see someone like Libby not only move into it, but move into it professionally and beautifully, that happens amongst us too, is um, a leader has been leading something for a really long time and the succession planning has been uh, less than stellar and uh, being able to step away and see uh, new ideas and new energy come in there, that's collaborative, is being able just to trust, you know, this is gonna happen or not, um, but how it should, um, and yeah. trusting each other to bring the gifts and letting it become what it becomes. Yeah. Can I geek out for one second? Geek out, Great. yes. <laughs> so I think it's also really important to say, like, as Unitarian Universalists, practicing shared ministry is very theologically sound and in, in fact, probably like the only thing we should be doing, right? Because we acknowledge that like each of us has our own beliefs and values and that what we collectively believe and value is what we all believe and value and what we've discerned needs like can and should be our priorities together. But just acknowledging that we are all have inherent worth and dignity, you know, that we all have a spark of love or light or the divine or whatever we want to say is like, that's the only way to, that's the only way to do it, you know? And it, and it is going to be more messy, but it's also going to be a lot more fun mm -hmm. and a lot more joyful. And oh my goodness, is this a fellowship that can have so much joy <laughs> and fun and throw a party like none other? Um, <laughs> right? And that's like, and that celebration is all part of it and the relationship building part of it too. Yeah. And the gift giving, that's all connected. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, some, I heard this at GA, can't remember where, but I heard someone saying inherent gifts and um, uh, innate, which is, was in the reading, um, no, inherent worth and then innate gifts mm. and putting those beside each other. Um, mm. And I love that because I was thinking of this reading. And then the other thing um, that I've heard uh, people say is just, uh, the, the receiving part, you know, we bring our gifts, but the receiving part of it too um, it was also in the reading. And that's where the affirm and promote comes in. I love those words. Um, and to be able to affirm someone's gifts and our own and then promote them and give a place for people to actually bring them with value to do what they do well. Yeah. Um, that's just a constant dynamic um, process, which keeps it exciting. Yeah. And the, Okay, we'll, we'll go down one more direction and then we'll ask you all a question. Um, the, that receiving is also part of the humility, yes. right? And the, I think for me, the most beautiful gift of being in shared ministry, as opposed to smaller congregations where there's like one minister who kind of has to do it all, is that like that's, that's like actually kind of a heavy burden to be holding. Right, and that like that method of doing things, and 
even we've talked a lot about like hero culture and like why we shifted the Joe Dawson Award to be like an award for one person who did so much and like probably we should have never asked them to do that much, you know, like <laughs> into, into like a gratitude gala gala where we're like celebrating everybody. Um, is that like I think shared ministry invites us into humility, but also like invites us to be like human and imperfect and name that like, yeah, there are things that I'm not great at and things that I don't know. And like, yes, I had a very long conversation with Megan Foster and Janet Lowe to be like, let's talk about what all these fun, funds mean and what they're balancing, you know, like, right? That like we get to say like, hey, there's a thing I don't know and I need to learn a little more of it. And also like sometimes like there's a thing I'm not great at that you're really good at. So like yeah. go for it. Um, but there's, there's, a, there's such a beauty and a gift or there has been for me and being able to trust that like there's a team and that includes staff team and you all that like has this and that is like holding the fellowship and I have some unique and particular responsibilities um, and like I need not be up on a pedestal I'm just a human who like thank God messes up all the time just like everyone you know and like that together we'll kind of navigate that yeah and that's just the best it is the best it really is yeah okay a question for you all. Okay, we have a question in the crowd. We didn't plan on this, but okay. I will repeat back what you say. Um, you want me to repeat it? Or I, do you want to? I, I think that, go for it. Well, what I'm hearing in that, Gloria, Gloria was just saying that um, the baseline kind of that we set, and, and I can connect that to covenant, and maybe some of you are too, is uh, coming to uh, being with each other in a way that is positive and, and, and moves us forward. And I don't think we once said the word curiosity in this mm. conversation. So that's, wow. that's what I was hearing, uh, mm -hmm. what, what you were saying, is that if we... If we are like, oh, I mean, I'm, I'm an Italian girl from New England, okay? Um, <laughs> I can get as irritated as the, the next person about one thing or another um, that wouldn't maybe affect someone else that way. But if you're, the curiosity, that deepens that relationship. And once those relationships deepen, then we do find each other's gifts. That's what I was hearing. Is that yeah. And I think actually this came up when Karen and I were talking because there, there is that like, um, yeah, approaching things with curiosity and and this is where things get messy in the interrelationship is that like when something that we did had an impact that we did not intend it to it's like staying at the table and listening to how my actions how any of our actions affected someone even if we did not imagine or have like think that it would impact them that way right and it's like listening making amends right making shifts in behavior, changing how we're doing things. Um, and that's, that's hard. And we, we know that that also builds relationships, right? And builds trust and allows us to like be more real together. Um, and we trust that like when we care about our relationship more than our egos, when we care about our, our mission more than our egos, that like that's, and we, we sometimes have to consciously remind ourselves, or at least I do, that like that's why we choose to stay at the table. And that's where like the magic can happen. Yeah. Okay, now we have a question for you all that you can think about for a second. Hello, my fellow introverts. And then we'll invite you if you want to, to share with someone around you. Um, but that question is, after hearing us talk a lot about gifts and uh, gifts and ministry, what what do you feel is your unique gift that you bring to this community or to the world? Take a moment. I know, just a light question for a Sunday morning. <laughs> right answers just in your head. I wish we had time to hear everyone's answers, but alas, we do not. 
take a moment, answer in your head, and then we'll let the extrovert share with the neighbor. <laughs> All right, if you would like to share what you believe is your gift, your way of being, let a neighbor know. Let a neighbor know. I'll call you back in just a minute. <laughs> crowd today. All right, beautiful humans. <laughs> I'm going to call you back in. <laughs> Start calling the names of some experts. When I say shared, you say ministry. Shared. Um, shared. Ministry. When I say shared, you say ministry. Shared. <laughs> Beautiful. Well done. <laughs> Thank you all. I am going to ask that we close up our conversations. However, rest assured, rest assured, folks, that if you want to continue your conversation, we have coffee hour. You can talk about this. Also, on the back of your order of service, we have our monthly questions for contemplation and conversation. So you can talk to others at coffee hour about those questions that we're kind of centering this month. All right, Karen, take us home. I think, I think the last thing I'd like to say is just gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. Um, uh, I, I have it for this congregation. I have it for our staff um, and our wonderful minister who we will celebrate even more today at three. Um, and I have it for you all. Um, it's, it's, it's good to be us. It's really good to be us, and I'm, I'm grateful for every single one of you. Thank you all.